Hi, this is Zach with Warner Wound. Uh, today I'm going to take a look at the Graf Zeppelin LZ129. Uh, it's a very interesting watch. Um, it's kind of uh, different than anything we've looked at on the site. Um, it's, I suppose, a dress watch, though it's kind of casual at the same time. Um, and it has styling that is unique. It's a little bit marine chronometer, and it's kind of also a bit antique. I say older than the kind of vintage military watches we look at. This more has a style that dates to the uh, 30s or 40s. Um, this is made by Point Tech, uh, which is a German brand that also makes Junkers and uh, the Maximilian watch brands. Um, they're not that widely available in the U.S., but uh, when you can find them, you'll see that they're generally a very good deal, um, ranging from about $200 to $1,000, uh, depending on the model. Uh, this particular model runs for $550, and for that you're getting a Miyota 9100 uh, automatic movement with a 20 to 26 joule automatic movement that features a uh, power reserve and a 24-hour hand, as well as a uh, standard three-hand uh, movement and a date wheel. The LZ129 features a uh, 40 millimeter uh, high polished stainless steel case with a, a very interesting design to it. Um, as you can see, it's, it's kind of edge to edge dial, which uh, is very nice because for 40 millimeter watch, um, it, it has a very good wrist presence and everything's very clear. Um, you look at the, the profile of this watch and you see it has a kind of an interesting shape to it. It tapers up, it goes flat and then tapers in to the domed Hesalite crystal. Uh, Hesalite, by the way, is just a, a, a certain form of acrylic. Um, here you have these kind of interesting shaped lugs, which um, I, I find they're, they're very nice. Uh, they, you know, you can see how they kind of protrude off of the case. They, they give you more than enough room for the strap, and yet at the same time, uh, they're not unwieldy or take away from the watch. Uh, the case has a uh, display case back um, with uh, screwed down with four screws has a little bit of etching around the edge um, and you can see the uh, Miyota 9100 movement very clearly in there. Um, one of my favorite features, design features of the watch is in fact the, the Hesalite crystal. Um, I can't speak to exactly to the uh, durability of it because you know it's acrylic so chances are you can scratch it but you can also buff it out but it really looks great it, it comes off uh, comes out you know I'd say about two millimeters and uh, you know just gives it a very uh, nice kind of old-fashioned look um, it also from the front has great optical clarity and has very low uh, glare which is which is always great so the LZ129 has a very um, kind of interestingly designed dial uh, that I happen to like a lot. Like I mentioned, it looks a bit like a marine chronometer watch, uh, which you know is styled like a deck watch from a military boat, um, but it also doesn't quite look like that either. It's kind of a unique thing. It's, um, it's very interesting and it's, it's not like any of the watches that we've looked at before. Um, just to go over kind of everything, you have the main uh, hour indices here in this kind of a uh, serif font that's slightly italicized. Um, I think it's very nice, it's elegant, gives the watch a little bit of a dressy appearance while at the same time not being uh, fussy. Um, around the very outer edge you have a uh, kind of a minute and second index. Um, once again you have a, it looks like the same font um, and then a lot of, you know, uh, little markings for the seconds. Um, it's very clean, precise, gives the watch a little bit of like an instrument look to it. Um, and then you have the two subdials. At the top you have the power reserve subdial. It says minimum all the way on the left. So when the watch is totally out of power, uh, the needle you know, will be over there. On the far side would be the 40th hour. So it has a 40 hour power reserve. Um, it's very clear. Right now you can see that it's got about 26 hours of uh, power left. Um, here you have the 24 hour subdial. Now this is not a GMT or dual time, it just coordinates with uh, the 24 hour scale, um, which is very nice. It's not, you know, I'd say as useful as a power reserve, which is probably one of the most useful complications you can have in a watch, um, but it's still very, very nice to have. Uh, that dial is broken up in four hour intervals, so you have 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24. Um, in photographs, that dial looks white, but in person it actually has a little bit of a silver or pearlescent kind of a tint to it, um, which, which is also very nice. Um, it goes well with the cream and it, it kind of, 
the cream of the, the dial and it, I don't know, just kind of adds a look of value to the watch. Around the edge of that you have an inlaid um, metallic uh, bevel which kind of picks up a little bit of, uh, of a glint of light every now and then and once again it's just a, it's, it's a nice detail. Um, here is this uh, at 6 o'clock. This is just a cool little thing that I've noticed actually on other Zeppelin watches too. There's a little uh, metal half sphere marking 6 o'clock. Um, it's a very subtle detail. You know, I think at a glance you wouldn't even notice it, but it's just it's one of those nice little touches. Uh, you have the date window at 3. The date disc is uh, also kind of a silvery gray with black text on it, um, which is nice because it, it doesn't contrast or, or Rather, it doesn't kind of hurt the look of the dial. Um, now to talk a little bit about the movement. So I said it's this Miyota 9100 movement, but it's actually been modified a little bit. The uh, Miyota 9100 movement uh, in its full feature set also has a date uh, wheel, which would be a subdial here, and then a month uh, or, sorry, or rather a day subdial and a month subdial. And for this watch, they decided to remove that, which I think was a good choice. Um, there's enough information on this dial as is, and what they kept is very useful. Um, so the Miyota 9100 movement is a uh, automatic 26 joule movement. It can also be hand wound. I'd like to show you actually what when you hand wind it, you'll see very quickly that the power indicator will uh, go up. So. you'll see that needle is uh, slowly moving up. Um, like I said, it's a very useful feature on a watch because you'll know very quickly um, if you're low on power um, or when you're full. You know, naturally, since it's an automatic, you don't really need to hand wind it. That's just the quickest way to watch the, the needle go up. Uh, now taking a look at the movement itself, um, you can see, like the Miyota 9015, uh, which we saw in the Lumtech Combat B16, this has a little bit of a Cote uh, de Geneva or uh, Geneva stripe on that plate there. Otherwise, it's a fairly undecorated movement, but it's nice looking. You know, I would like to see some decoration on the rotor, since it is, it is like a big flat piece of metal. But um, it's still very nice to look at, and it's uh, nice that they're featuring it. It's, um, it's, a, it's a cool movement, and it definitely adds a lot of value to this watch because of the added uh, complications. The Zeppelin LZ129 is a very comfortable watch to wear. Uh, at 40 millimeters, it's definitely on the kind of small to uh, mid-size for a contemporary watch. Uh, but the dial is uh, edge to edge, so it really has great wrist, wrist presence. Um, and because of the relatively small or smaller size, it's really not bulky at all. Um, it's also not thick, so you know it's very easy to wear. You don't really even notice it. Um, it's kind of even a let's say kind of a lightweight watch for a mechanical watch. Um, you know, with the the kind of the build of it, the look of it. You know, I think it kind of is a little bit of a of a dressier watch than you know some of the watches we looked at than you know say divers or some of the military inspired watches. But it has this kind of uh, instrument aesthetic at the same time. So it, it, it is kind of a little bit sporty, a little bit casual, um, basically just a very versatile watch. Also the cream coloring kind of, you know, goes with anything. Right now I have a blue shirt on, I think that's a very nice combination. Uh, the watch comes on a, tw on a 20 millimeter wide uh, leather, brown leather strap. It's kind of a very even chocolate brown with uh, brown stitching. It's uh, actually very nice quality and it's um, very comfortable. Um, yeah, I think that this is a, this is a very interesting watch. Um, if you're kind of interested in the aesthetic of this kind of like early 20th century, you know, 30s, 40s look, um, if you're interested in a watch with a power reserve and a 24-hour indicator, which is really kind of uh, not seen in the price range of $550, you know, that often at least, um, then this is really a great watch for you. Um, I know that I, I find it very enjoyable. It's, it really stands out amongst the other watches uh, that I own or that we've looked at on the site. So that immediately makes it uh, kind of have a lot of value to me. Um, yeah, so this is Zach from Morning Wine once again. Um, I hope you enjoyed this hands-on. Uh, please uh, follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and uh, keep coming back to the site for more.